My name is Wendy Liu, and I eat bugs. <laughs> I also research insect farming globally. So, when I say rancher, can you picture this? <laughs> Micro livestock. It's what's for dinner. <laughs> Let's get to the meat of this topic. <clears throat> Since I added insects to my diet, my family has had some changes. Um, first of all, every time I bake something, my eight-year-old son asks me pretty dubiously, "Are there crickets in this?" And this is my daughter in the middle trying chocolate chirp cookies with some classmates. <laughs> Once they uh, got over smelling them, they gobbled them down. On the other end of the food spectrum, some of the swankiest restaurants in the world are serving dishes with various insect powders and whole bugs. And they're doing this because insects are not only delicious and close relatives to shellfish, think land prawn, they also are healthy for us and address a host of environmental problems that we are facing as a species trying to feed ourselves. Let's start with healthy. Edible insects have as much protein as traditional livestock. They have way more iron and as much calcium as milk. There's also a whole host of micronutrients like vitamin A, essential fatty acids. I mean, who knew insects were so good for us, right? They also are sustainable, they're basically poster children for sustainability. Raising traditional livestock uses about 70% of all agricultural land. That's about one third of all the land on Earth. Edible insects, on the other hand, need much less space to raise the same amount of food. Remember, micro livestock, yeah. And in general, insects need drastically less resources to produce the same amount of food in part because they get their water from the food they eat and because they convert meat to feed so efficiently. So for example, you can produce the same amount of crickets with one-ninth the amount of feed and 22,000 times less water as compared to beef. Yeah, not very sustainable beef, pork, and chicken. All right, we're gonna talk about cow farts now. Yeah, I said cow farts. <laughs> and I just want to apologize to my southern family because ladies don't talk about this topic, so. Sorry, Mom. <laughs> Agriculture, um, and in particular livestock production, produces more greenhouse gas emissions than all transportation and vehicles combined. <laughs> so are you guys still thinking about cow farts? <laughs> Get your mind out of the gutter. Edible insects, on the other hand, produce almost no greenhouse gas emissions. They're more polite animals, I suppose, and the inputs needed to raise them are so much lower. Very, very sustainable edible insects. And it is imperative that we focus on food sources that are sustainable to produce, because we are facing major challenges in how we'll feed ourselves. I dare you, in fact, I double-dog dare you to forget pest and put away your food prejudices. Insects are a food resource that we must consider and with gusto. And this is in part because a lot of the challenges that we are facing as a species trying to feed ourselves. Between now and the year 2050, how we will feed ourselves is uncertain at best. On one hand, we're growing in population, and in demand for meat, particularly as incomes rise in developing countries. On the other hand, our resources are shrinking. By the year 2050, one in nine people may not have access to water, and we may lose up to one-third of our arable land, the land where we grow our food. More people, higher demand for meat, less resources to produce food. And agriculture is perhaps unique in how it both affects climate change and also how it is affected by climate change. And one of the strongest effects that we think is happening and will continue to happen increasingly is a reduction in how much food we're able to produce. So this map shows you 
how crop yields are going to reduce between now and 2050. And you'll notice that the biggest effects are in a lot of places where people are living on less than $2 a day. Extreme poverty, extreme hunger. <sighs> all right, I'm totally stressed out by all these problems. Let's take a minute, deep breath, and contemplate this really cute cricket. <laughs> it's also really delicious, yeah. <laughs> all is not yet lost. That's one of the big pieces of good news. We still have the opportunity to make changes that will positively impact our present and our future. And the adding edible insects to our diet is not only healthy for you and the planet, but it also gives us an opportunity to join the cool kids, because almost everyone is doing it around the world. This map of entomophagy, the fancy word for eating insects, is, shows how about 80% of the world regularly eats insects, mostly through collection in the wild. And you might notice how this map lines up so neatly with the climate change effects on crop yields in places where people are going to have an increasingly difficult time growing the food for themselves, they're already eating insects. And I believe this gives us a huge um, possibility for insect farming. But that is not enough. In the places where there are outliers not regularly eating insects, basically in the United States and Europe, our demand for meat has a disproportionately negative effect on climate change and global eating trends. What we eat, our food choices, matter a great deal. But, I know, the thought of eating insects is unappetizing to many people. And I know because I've been through this. The very first time I tried cricket flour, I had a mental hurdle to get over. And every time I try a new species, like here, um, that was silkworm larva in Korea, I have to get over my food prejudices. But it was actually really delicious, by the way. But um, food prejudices are weird and arbitrary. On one hand, we won't consider a food that we know now is healthy, sustainable, delicious, truly. But that is something that some people consider to be food. I think it's a food-like substance, but it's actually a real thing you could eat. But all joking aside, the real ick factor is in factory farmed meat. All right, so now what? Like a politician, I'm going to leave you with a three-point plan, call to action. Number one, continue to think about your food choices. Think about how they impact you and the planet and make the very best choices for the whole ecosystem. Number two, vote with your food choices. Ask for insect products at your markets where you shop. If you're trying to reduce your overall meat consumption, consider substituting traditional livestock with some micro livestock. And number three, share this idea. <laughs> Share it online. Hashtag edible insects could be trending. Share it in person. Share it with your neighbors, your friends, your family, the children in your life, future food voters. The more people that know about this idea that insects are food, the more impact we can have. So, remember the cliche, there's no act too small to make a difference. And in this case, it could be the smallest food that has a huge and positive impact. Thank you very much.